a reading from the book of Sirach. Now will I praise those godly men, our ancestors, each in his own time. But of others there is no memory, for when they ceased, they ceased. And they are as though they had not lived, they and their children after them. If these also were godly men, whose virtues have not been forgotten, their wealth remains in their families, their heritage with their descendants. Through God's covenant with them, their family endures, their posterity for their sake. And for all time, their progeny will endure. Their glory will never be blotted out. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord takes delight in his people. Sing to the Lord a new song of praise in the assembly of the faithful. Let Israel be glad in their maker. Let the children of Zion rejoice in their king. The Lord takes delight in his people. Let them praise his name in the festive dance. Let them sing praise to him with timbrel and harp. The Lord loves his people and he adorns the lowly with victory. The Lord takes delight in his people. Let the faithful exult in glory. Let them sing for joy upon their couches. Let the high praises of God be in their throats. This is the glory of all his faithful. Alleluia. The Lord takes delight in his people. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple area. He looked around at everything, and since it was already late, went out to Bethany with the twelve. The next day, as they were leaving Bethany, he was hungry. Seeing from a distance a fig tree and leaf, he went over to see if he could find anything on it. When he reached it, he found nothing but leaves. It was not the time for figs. And he said to it in reply, May no one ever eat of your fruit again. And his disciples heard it. They came to Jerusalem. And on entering the temple area, he began to drive out those selling and buying there. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who were selling doves. He did not permit anyone to carry anything through the temple area. Then he taught them, saying, Is it not written, My house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples? But you have made it a den of thieves. The chief priests and the scribes came to hear of it, and were seeking a way to put him to death, yet they feared him because the whole crowd was astonished at his teaching. When evening came, they went out of the city. Early in the morning, as they were walking along, they saw the fig tree withered to its roots. Peter remembered and said to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree that you cursed is withered. Jesus said to them in reply, Have faith in God. Amen, I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be lifted up and thrown into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he says will happen, it shall be done for him. Therefore, I tell you, all that you ask for in prayer, believe that you will receive it, and it shall be yours. When you stand to pray, forgive anyone against whom you have a grievance, so that your heavenly Father may, in turn, forgive your transgressions. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Brilliant Gospel today. A lot going on. First, the, the dynamic of the fig tree. And then cleansing the temple, of course, which we're all familiar with. And then finally, the teaching on prayer. Have faith in God, Jesus says. Ask for anything. What you ask for in prayer, believe that it, you will receive it, and it shall be yours. So, ask and you shall receive. Again, something, something we're familiar with, but it gets to the heart of, of desire, which I've talked about before. So, let's start with that. Desire. Holy desires. Holy desires are placed in our heart by God. Uh, it, it's like God plants something within us and, and draws it out of us. Remember, uh, think of Jesus when he, uh, the, the miraculous catch of fish, you know, when the, the apostles are unable to, to catch fish all night, and then Jesus says, you know, cast the net over the right side, and you'll find something. Jesus puts the fish in the sea, tells them to go after it. They draw it out, and, and then after the resurrection, they'll give it to Jesus to cook for breakfast. So, 
Jesus puts the desire in our heart. He tells us to tap into that desire and then draws it out or fulfills it for us. The holy desires of your heart are placed in God by you. By, by, I'm sorry, placed in you by God. But he needs you to tap into it. And that's when he says, ask, ask for it. That's you tapping into the desire. So what, did, what are some of those holy desires? And like I've said before, when you're struggling in prayer, it's helpful to just step back and, and what do I want? Okay, I want to experience God. I want peace. I want um, a healthy marriage. You know, my marriage might be struggling. Or I'm not married and I want to find someone because I'm lonely. And, I, you know, I want to be have intimacy and companionship. That's a holy desire, right? Uh, an unholy desire would say, I just, you know, I want pleasure. I want money um, for selfish reasons or ambition, power, or so forth. God will draw that out of you if we tap into it. Have faith in God. That's, that's faith. Believing that God has given you that desire, and he will bring it to completion, to fulfillment. The fig tree is not tapping in to its desire. That's why it's not bearing fruit. Even though it doesn't matter that it's not the time of season. The time of God's desires are always always in season. So the fig tree doesn't bear fruit. It's meant to. We, we are those fig trees. Let us not be barren. And we can bear fruit and not be barren by simply recognizing and having faith in God the desires that he's placed on our hearts. Come, Lord Jesus, plant into our hearts seeds of holy desires. May they bear fruit, delicious sweet fruit like fig, figs and fig trees. We trust in you, Lord. We have faith in you. Make our faith and our desires come to fulfillment. Amen.